So the planimetric base file or the XPA site is the base file that's used in case you do not have survey. I say you have a project that doesn't have survey, you know, then you're going to use an XPA site. But also this file is created, you know, to complement the surveys where you do not have data. So, for example, for your surveys, you know, the for the production files, you need, you know, to have a one, let's say, one to 20 scale plans. Yeah, in the one to 20 scale plans, you know, your your survey might not cover the whole extent of the sheet. Yeah, the whole plan. You know, so for example, the survey might start at the right way, but to, to show the stuff behind the right way, like the buildings or the stuff is behind the right way. Yeah. So, in so that case, you know, you're gonna complement the survey with the planimetric data or the XVA site. If you don't have a survey, the XVA site serves for both outside and inside. You know, because you don't have survey. But if you have survey the plan measure, the exercise search for the complementing of the data within the 20 scale that's outside of your survey area. Yeah? So pretty much anything from the outside or anything they, you know, they cannot pick up on the survey. So that being said, you're going to start with the template. You're going to start from the right template. You're going to go to new, cross templates, go to base files, and the base file I'm going to select in here the XVA site. Yeah? And best typically this, this type of project is the project that, you know, maybe you might use it for like, you know, uh, ATD and so on, or big like field engine projects, or any engine field engine project might, might require this stuff, you know, you, you can require this type of base file to be created. And anyway, you have to create, you know, anyway, you know, because it's supposed to complement your data. So X project be side, I'm going to come in here and take, you know, the this stuff, I'm going to copy it because this makes it easier. Rather than try to find out where is the name of it, because you know when you create the file, that's great. The file is X project B site. We just close the drawing too. I'm coming here save. And I'm gonna come in here and put it, you know, in here right there and call it X SSRD. It's a 2D file and B A site. Bit survey A stands for aerial or LIDAR and then dash site. You know, so it's a survey LIDAR base file. Okay. So at this moment. We're gonna try to like in order to bring the data in here because you know the data we're gonna bring it is, is brought in the GIS source data like you know the planimetric base files. So in order to bring the data, we have to figure out where is our project location. Yeah. So in this project location, we're gonna see like how we're gonna get you know how we're gonna go about it. We're gonna try to reference a couple of projects or a couple of base files that give you the location. Yeah. So the first, the only one that you're gonna give you the location at this moment is what is the survey file. Without the survey file, you can come in here to geolocation tab. Go to the map in here and change it here to map hybrid or aerial, doesn't matter. I'm going to change it to here to hybrid because what this one gives you, it gives me an aerial background to kind of search for the area where my project is located. Yeah, so at this moment, you're going to see that I have like, you know, the circle. This is the downtown area of Austin. And you can come in here and browse for the location of the project. And I guess this one might be somewhere in here. I'm going to get north of the river. And it's uh, right here, Spicer Spring. So it starts from this location, more or less. I mess up drive and goes all the way to this location, yeah. So this moment, I know that this location of my project, yeah. Now let's bring in the survey because we have the survey and see how it aligns with us there, yeah. So I'm going to come in here. I'm going to go to XREF. I'm going to come in here to attach a DWG. I'm going to attach in here. Looks like you know it pointed to this location, and I'm going to go to my projects. I'm going to go one Garcia of Austin. I'm going to go to CDS projects. Go to this one CAD reference files and DWG. I'm going to attach in here the B side, yeah. And coming here, click open. Now, here when you attach base files, always when you attach base files or any production files, base files always set it to overlay. Do not ever set it to attachment. If you set it to attachments, the base files are going to be nested. So that means, you know, whatever this base file comes, all the base files attached to it are going to go there. And you don't want to return. You want to not to be like, you know, specific about which base file you attach to where. So because of that one, always set it to overlay. You don't have to specify any on-screen points at this moment, you know, and always make sure it's set up to relative, yeah, because you want to make sure that, you know, if this project, you know, gets, you know, let's say archived and passed on to some, some other team or some other consultant, you're going to be able to find all the base files and stuff, because otherwise we have to remap, you know, a whole stuff, yeah. So, relative path, overlay, and click open. So, now I'm going to see that, you know, the survey gets attached. However, there's an issue, or you can see there's an issue, like, you know, this is the data, this is the aerial, and this is where the survey, you know, so why this start happens? Now, for the city of Austin surveys, typically this is not going to happen because the surveys are scaled at the point, the center on the side, you know, so typically what the survey is going to do in the field, going to pick a point somewhere in the center, like a control point, and they're going to scale it, you know, like around this point in here, so that means, you know, here, when we do the scaling from grid to ground, 
the data will be very accurate in the center. However, not going to be as accurate on the sides, you know. But but you know, this one, if you have a project that's maybe like you know less than a mile long or maybe that stuff, you know, you're not going to see the difference. It's not a big difference when it comes about the sides, yeah. It's a it's a very it's a very big issue for a project that's maybe like let's say you know six seven miles long, yeah. Because you know, it's like maybe maybe at the edges it's going to be like a difference, maybe I don't know, maybe half a foot or so difference, you know, you know horizontally. But for these projects, you know, you don't have enough stuff. You know? So for us, we typically use a century on the side, yeah. Now, there are some projects, you know, that, you know, for instance, text that does it or another stuff, you know, that you're going to have the project. And if you work on this kind of projects, they're going to be scaled from zero, zero, yeah. So rather than having the scaling here at the point on the side, the people, they're going to use the scaling from zero, zero coordinate. And for you, the zero, zero coordinate, I'm going to show you the zero, zero coordinate. I'm going to come in here, I'm going to make a circle. I put comma, zero, comma, zero, and radius a thousand feet. I'm going to come in here and turn off your here, your map off. I'm going to show you here where's your zero zero compared to that one. So your project is in your project is in a uh, here and your zero zero it's somewhere in here. Where is that one? It's, not, it's just right below it. No, it's here somewhere. Right there. Oh, there it is. So that's your zero. If I put here, I'm going to put a, if I put a polygon from the center of this stuff to the location where my project is. I don't know where it's somewhere. In here. You see? I thought it was right here by the yeah. Right there. So let's say you're gonna put right distance from here to here. So this polyline here, you're gonna see that in the skin. If I go to the properties of this polyline, minimize properties the length is a million or ten million feet. <laughs> so that ten, so so that the, pretty much the scaling is done at at the at the point that's ten million, let's say ten million feet away from your project, yeah. So because of that one, so that means, you know, in, in, if the scaling is done that one, you're supposed to figure out a way for the data to align, you know, and the way that one is done is done with a scale factor. That, you know, says like if you apply the scale factor to this base file, you're going to come in the right location in the other coordinate, yeah. So it is the same coordinate system, it's only that it's a modified coordinate system because they apply pretty, pretty much, they take the data from grid to ground by applying a scaling from zero, zero versus a point on the side. If the point would be on the side, the scaling will be at the same the same point if the if the data is done at the point in here. Think about going from grid to ground. It's going to be on the vertical axis, so it goes to, from the top down, and then it scales this way, yeah, from the center. You know, so because the distance is like 5,000 feet, it's not the same as 10 million feet, mm -hmm. and it's pretty much you can be about stuff you know, about because you know some projects that scale from zero zero, then you have to know how to deal with stuff, and I choose this stuff that project just you know to make people aware of like. It might happen for you to have to deal with this stuff. So when it happens with stuff, you know, just make sure that it's an extra step. Mm -hmm. Now, typically, you don't have to worry about it because you're going to see like, hey, everything aligns. But, you know, if it doesn't align, you have to figure out how this one works for you. So I'm going to come back here to map hybrid. And let's figure out about this stuff in here, like how this one will work for us. So the project in here, like now, all the scaling when it's up was zero, zero. The zero, zero, it's on the southwest corner of your cap file, yeah? So that means if I have to scale from zero, zero, the duration of the duration of the translation of the survey, it's always done on an axis from the southwest to the northeast. So that's the axis, you know, from the left bottom to the top right corner. It's always that's the axis, the way it moves, yeah. Now because it moves that way, that means you know, like in here, like if I look at this this stuff, you know, I have to find the scale factor, you know. So if I look at here the survey at, at the data from the survey, let's go here to map off. You can see that in here it tells you the data for it in the base of bands for it is Texas state blah 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 and it's adjustment uh, adjustment factor of 1.00011 yeah so this it tells you you know in order for them to get the data from grid to ground they have to apply a scale factor 1.0011 to the whole data yeah so that means what happens in here in order to, I'm gonna show you like what happened in the map hybrid in order to go from here to here they apply 1.00011 on the whole data set, yeah? So that means for you to bring it back to grid, you have to apply an inverse of that 1.0011, yeah? So how would you know find the inverse? If you come in here, if you go to like, you know, like uh, maybe a calculator, this is the stuff you're gonna put here, you're gonna go to the calculator, you open your calculator, that one, you're gonna put in, gonna be one divided by 1.00011. So you take one divided by Vasca factor that, you know, they used to get up to the 20. Yeah. So if I come in here and I say enter, you can see this the scale factor is 0 0.99989. So that means, you know, for you to go from surface back to grid, you're going to have to apply to this data set 
that scaling into the whole cat file. Yeah. So how do you apply that scaling to the whole cat file? You can apply it afterwards, or you can apply it while you attach it. So that two ways. You know, so if you apply it afterwards, you have to select the reference, you have to go here to properties, and then in here you're gonna have to says like the scale on the X, the scale on the Y. The point will be 0 0.99989 to get it to degree, yeah. So if I put here, I put a point 0.999989, you see it shows up in a one, there's something about button, it's 9589, right there. Yeah? I think you did it for us. There you go, it shows 999. Now you wonder like why it shows up, you know, 999, why that shows A9, because I have a stop. You can always come in here and type units. You can come in here where it says like you know, the precision you change it from 0 0.0 to 5 decimals. Mm -hmm. And then you're gonna give it like pretty much you not know, the true the stuff, you know. So it's like, hey, I don't see the A9, you know, so now I'm gonna sign it back and find the A9. So if you don't do it this way, like you know, the like if you already know if you already know that you know the the base file, it's you know, it's in uh, it's in a uh, zero to zero, you know, uh, surface to grid. B to surface, you can come here, you attach the WG. I'm gonna say, okay, so right now I'm gonna attach in here the V side, click open. And in here, if you look at the attachment, the XREF, you're gonna come in here, change your know, uniform scale and put you know, here 0 0.999 while you attach it, yeah? So by doing that one and click okay, you don't have to worry about like, you know, adding, I'm doing afterwards, right though. Mm -hmm. So now you have the data for you. So now for you, you have to think about like, okay, I need to bring all the data that's in this area, the planimetric data for that area. And to build the planimetric data for that area, you have to think about like, you know, where this, on which production file is this file used, you know, and the only place it's used, it's on the 20 scale. Now 20 scale, if I open in here, let's come and show you, let's start from here. Let's go and think of an idea. I will come here, new browse templates. I'm going to go to the plan production, let's say plan plan, just to get a plan plan one of them. If you look at, you know, the viewports for 20, uh, for the viewports, you know, the typical viewports for our cache sheets for 20, for production purposes. If I select this viewport and I look at the properties, you can see it's a what? The, the, the length doesn't matter. Look at the width, it's a 10. So the, it doesn't matter the length, just think about the width. I'm just trying to feel like, you know, how much can I fit to the left and to the right of my design? So if you look at the width of that one of the viewport, it's a width of 10. That means on a 20 scale, I can fit in the view 200 feet, yeah? It's 10 times 20. On a 40 scale, I can fit in you know, 400 feet, yeah? So knowing that one, that means in here, like if I look at my V side in here, if I know that my design is along the center line of this you know, roadway in here, I can define the center line of this roadway and then offset it to the, right, to the, to the left and to the right, you know, let's say 200 feet. And give by extents of how much that I have to bring because I don't have to bring like lots of people that I come in here and you can do that one for lots of projects. You can do here a rectangle and be like a big rectangle. So I can make here a big rectangle like this stuff, but this is going to bring you more of the data that you need. You know, I don't need all that data. I just need the data that's 200 feet away to, to the left and 200 feet to the right. Yeah. So typically, what, what I would do in here to be like more precise about the amount of because CAD it's very, let's say it's very resource high. Like, you know, it, you have to be a uh, manager of data. The, be the, be the better way you manage the data, the faster it moves. So if you bring too much data, you don't need, you know, it doesn't work the right way. So in here, I pretty much, I'll do, I'll, I'll, I'll do the following. It's like a polyline, I'm going to start from here. So this is where the device survey ends, and I'm going to come in here and do a polyline that comes like this, you know, center of the stuff. So pretty much follow the center of, you know, the road we have. And I'm not going to define the polyline here because I already defined it in another CAD file. I'm going to just copy it, 00, zero base 00, zero, because it's much easier. I speed up the process. So in here, I'm going to come in here, I'm going to say that I have this polyline. I'm going to take this one here, I'm going to say copy zero, 00. And I did it, you know, outside of the training. So I'm speeding up the process, so you don't have to do it, but I feel like you can do it yourself. You're a manager of data. Yeah, you're going to say page zero, 00. So right in here, you're going to see, like, you know, I have, I have a problem that I pretty much I trace. Not very beautiful. I just trace, you know, the, the center of the roadway. You know, it's like I don't have to make an alignment to see it. I just like as much close, you know, as I can do the cell line, you know. Now, on this one, what I did to this stuff, you know, I went to this location and I made the circle base, like, for example, I made the circle in here. Like how much more data I want to bring in that way. And I put here, I put maybe 500 feet, you know, so if I say 500 feet, it's like you see like that, pretty much I go 500 feet, you know, on each side of the survey. So 500 up and stuff and stuff. Now, I pretty much, I put my circles with one and what I got at the end with, I'm going to come in here and I'm going to take, you know, pretty much all the data in here. Um, that one, what else, which one? This one and this one. So I'm going to say copy zero, zero. 
I mean, sorry, it's not part of the workflow. It's just that, you know, I did it on the side, I speed up the process, but, you know, you have to do it on yourself, you know. So you see, like, you know, pretty much, you know, this is my survey, and I got went 500 feet, you know, past the one. Of course, I look at, you know, the aerial to give me an idea, like, you know, where the roadway goes, because see, it's hard to see where the roadway goes. So put the aerial background, you know, and you can have the idea for, you know, what, you know how much that you need and stuff. And once I have all this line work, then I say, like, okay, I need how much? 200 feet on each side of the side, because, you know, the maximum, the maximum, uh, the maximum I'm going to use, you know, to be for 40 scale, you know, anything over 40 scale, you know, you can use for production purposes, it'd be hard. So as like, if, let's say at, at the worst, if I need 40 scale for design purposes, I'll need 200 feet on each side of the, you know, of the road, yeah? So because of the one, I'm going to come in here and do what? I'm going to say offset in here, I'm going to put, you know, 200 feet. I'm going to say it's selecting the stuff offset on that side. So the stuff, you know, gives you, you know, the outline. Then I'm going to take this stuff in here, 200 feet on each side. Then I'm going to come here on the top, I'm going to make 200 feet on each side. So I'm going to come in here, right there. I'm going to come in here, 200 feet. You can, be even, you can be even more than 200 if you need to, but yeah. So it'll be 200, you know. Then I'm going to connect, you know, all the dots in here. So I'm going to say a polyline in here. I'm going to put, you know, a connection point from here. So from here to here. And then from there to there, and I connect the points, then I'm going to trim all the data. I'm going to come up with a very beautiful closed polyline. It's like this is the extent of my whole data. Yeah? So if I come in here, I'm going to say here, select similar. I'm going to say delete those ones. I'm going to come in here, delete this one. I'm going to give you the, the, the final polyline. So I'm going to come in here. And this is my final polyline. Close polyline. I'm going to come in here, properties, copy zero, zero. And I'm going to put it in my file in here. Now this one is placed in the non plotable layer. So it's not in layer zero. I mean, lots of people might think like, hey, it's layer zero. Why use layer zero? So I come into the properties. and I see that it's placed in the you know, plot design. Now this one, I also change the color because I want to like, you know, for our, 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 for our, you know, demo purposes, so you can see it. Because otherwise, it's, you know, if I come here to put it by there, you can see if it's gray. You cannot see it. So I put, you know, I put green, so you can see it well. Now, once you have all this done here, you're gonna say, like, okay, what's the next step? You know, it's pretty much bring the planning metric data. So I'm gonna come in here, save the file. Then I'm gonna come here to extend references, and I'm gonna unload, you know, my V side. And you know, to bring the planning metric data, you need to know where it's located on the city grid, yeah? So you need, you know, pretty much you need the grid to be, to reference in the grid for the planning metrics, you know? So I'm gonna come in here to XREF, and then I'll come here to DWG, attach DWG, and I'm gonna go to where? Uh, OneDrive City of Austin, ATXCAD, data sets, grids, planning metrics. So you select the grid planning metrics, click open, and click. You don't have to put any scaling for it, you know, it's already one-to-one -one scale, this is grid, you know, so you don't worry about it, click OK. So based on this stuff, it tells you like the data that you try to bring in, it's in two quads, Jollyville Southeast, and the Austin West Northeast. So once you know, know that one, you're gonna say like, okay, I'm gonna need to bring those two quads and process the data based on, you know, based on this extent. So how, how you gonna go, it's you, you, how you gonna go about that one, you're gonna use the mapping workflow. So pretty much map, so sorry, the mapping workflow starts with the map W space. I turn on, I pops up with this, you know, dialog box that some people know, some people they forgot about it. Now if by chance, you know, like you see like your stuff spinning, it's like my mouse spinning. You to fix the tango to tool space in the prospector and change it from active join view to master view and your spinner gonna go away. There you go, it goes away. So if you don't like to see that spinner. But you know, you go to map explorer, I'm gonna say here right click on the joins and say attach. I'm going to ask you where you want to attach from. Before we used, we used to map like, you know, like, a, let's say a Q drive or an M drive or some other drive where the data is located. Yeah, for us, all the data, it's in OneDrive, yeah? Now, how would you access your OneDrive? Your OneDrive, you see, there's nothing here says OneDrive. Yeah, there's no way to go here says OneDrive and so on. Now, the OneDrive, it's always, you have to remember, the OneDrive is connected to the user. So you have to go first to your user. And to go to your users, you're going to go on the C drive, you're going to go to users. Then you're gonna go to your user. This is my user. And then the one once you're inside of your user, you're gonna find the OneDrive. So you're here gonna find the OneDrive City of Boston. And for other people, gonna be whoever whatever is the data okay, it could be on a different drive and so on. But you once you go, you're gonna go to ATX CAD, data sets, line matrix 2021. And here find the two quads that that, you know, crossed by that in the outline in this Jollyville. So that's Austin West Northeast. 
like that. Click add, so select it and click add. And then Jollyville, so remember Jollyville, Southeast, click add, click OK. Now that now the, the two files are going to be added, you can see them right here on the left corner where added. So now it's up to us for us to, you know, to define a query. This is like, OK, I want to bring the data from these two files into my current file using this extent. Now that query, we're going to right click on the current query, this is define, so pretty much we have to define it. So I'm going to go here in the query, we're going to see if it, it tells the query type and or not, you know, so be an and type of query. It will be based on location. The location will be based on a polyline because like, hey, I want to use the polyline. Now here on the right side, you know, the section type, you know, it should be set, always should be set to crossing because you want to make sure that anything that's inside of the polyline or it crosses it, it's brought in. And then this one is the one you worry about, it's just give it a polygon and then click on the define button. When you click define, you can ask you like, you know, right here on the bottom, it says select polyline or arc. I'm going to set the polyline. You can see up on the top, it says location crossing polyline polygon. It's like, okay, we defined the location. The next, the next step is like, you know, the query mode, you know, how you want to, you know, how you want to query, you want to preview it or you want to draw it. You know, if you set it to preview, you're going to run for the query, you're going to display a graphical display of the data, but as soon as you zoom out, it's going to disappear. It's just a visual display of the data, you know, from the query. If you set it to draw, you're going to take it from the CAD files and bring it in your CAD file. So the preview mode does only preview it. The draw mode brings it in. The preview mode is a temporary, temporary view. What's that stuff? So we're gonna set it to draw mode. And then in here you can say like you know if you can either say exit query, click OK, you know, pretty much to finish. Now once you click, say I click OK, and now I'm gonna run the query the query. So I'm gonna say execute and define. Now on the bottom right here on the bottom left corner, you can see that it goes through the stuff and you know brings the data. So right now it's like it, we move very fast because you know we don't have as much data, but it brought all the data that crosses or intersects that polymer. So you say it crosses, intersects, or it's inside. So it's like you know, it brings more data that we actually need. Yeah. Now once you're done with this one, you're gonna detach them. So select the two of them. So pretty much once you're done with the data, detach, detach it. The next thing is like, you know, you're going to have to bring a couple more data sets in here. So we're going to come here to the drawings and say attach. And we go up here from line and metrics and we're going to go through our list of data sets. So say we need boundaries. No, we don't need boundaries. If you're going in boundaries, you see our city council. We don't care about this stuff. You might care about the golden creek warbler because it's a protected species and maybe you want to see like, you know, how it impacts the planet. I guess for this project, okay. we need it in the time. But for us, you know, we don't care about this stuff. So we're going to go cadaster. In the cadastro, you have like, you know, you have like the like cap base files for Eastman, Eastman text, and the the, the county parcels, which are the Williamson. So the one we're gonna look for now, we're gonna go for Eastman, Eastman text, and Travis County parcels, because I know this is in Travis County. If it's Williams County, you're gonna add Williamson to you know, but you know, for now, we just in, we just know that we need those ones. So I click add, that add it to your list of uh, cap files to be queried. Now we can click OK and run the query, or you can just say like, hey, we need more data. You know, this is not the only data that you need to bring. So I'm going to go up. We're going to come in here to, let me see which one. I'm going to go to maps. No, we're going to go to inland wires. From the inland islands, we need the creek center line. So click, click add. And we're going to need here the flat, the flat plain femur. We don't use the, the Austin one, it's not that approved one. The one here you're supposed to search on your cat file is the flat, the flat plain the femur. So click add. It's like we're not done yet. We go to the maps. The last step we need from here is going to be the roads names. Right so from the maps, you can add the road names and click add. So now I'm going to click OK. You're going to wait for the cat files to be attached. It might take you know a bit, you know, a bit longer depending on like you know how many files you have attached and what the size. And if you download them for the first time because the data is in Sherp in the cloud. And if you have to use it, the first thing has to download it first before you have to use it. So if you use it multiple times and stuff, let's say for multiple projects, it will be already cached. But if it's not used from, you know, like if you use it maybe once a month in, in your in your storage settings on your machine is set up, you know, to clear the the cloud data, you see now it's attached. Uh, to clear the cloud data, this one might be, you know, might go back to the cloud rather than cache locally. Yeah? So this moment that, you know, attached, and you're going to say, like, hey, do I have to go and define a new query? No, you don't define it. You know, the query once is defined, it's saved already with the, you know, mm -hmm. you have to go and say, like, you know, here, define. 
If I can say it, it'll be fine. I don't have to do anything with you. So what you're doing with this stuff, you're going to right click on the current code, you're going to say what? Let's say execute is defined. Let it go through the process of defining it. There you go. You see on the bottom left corner, it says objects processed. This is stuff you know, running here on the bottom. This is because pretty much you know, it goes for each of those CAD files and it's like, you know, it goes for all the data. It's like, okay, which data it's inside of this uh, stuff, you know, it's like, okay, bring this stuff and goes to the next one and the next one. So it's like, you know, so that's what it says. Well. There you go. So we're done with stuff. Of course, if you once you're done with them, you're going to come in here and detach them. Always detach them. Do not leave them attached. So this is very important. No detachment because otherwise your stuff is going to be slow and it's not supposed to be attached anyway. So at this moment, we're going to click save because we are done at a major step unless you want to, you know, maybe lose your work. That's simple, but don't want to lose their work. So now uh, at this moment, we have this data and you're going to see like in here that we have like the data from uh, GS. Like we have like the property, you know, information. We have like the driveways. We have like, you know, the part in the buildings and so on, you know. However, if I come here to extend references, the next step would be for us to clean up the LIDAR data or you pretty much, you know, clean up the data to remove the data that's already surveyed, yeah? Because at this moment, if you look in, I'm going to show you here, if I look in this area, this edge of the road where it's already surveyed, yeah? So it means, you know, from this base file, I'm supposed to remove it because you're going to have two line words. You, know, you have to have a single line work and the, and the accurate one is the survey one. The LIDAR has to go, yeah? So I'm going to come here to the external reference. I'm going to come to the V site. I'm going to say reload. Now, if I reload here, you're going to see like pretty much, you're going to see like, you know, here, this is the, this is the line work from my file and this is from survey. So the missing here, somebody, it either has to go manually and remove each of these line work for everything that you have defined, or you can speed up the process by doing the turn by defining a donut hole. Pretty much you define all the areas that have been surveyed to remove it from the LIDAR. So that means in here, so what, you know, what you have to do, I'm going to come here to let manager kind of give you an idea. I'm going to go here to extract, you know, to, to see like the difference. I'm going to come in here and change all this one maybe to a different color. This I'm going to change to this color so you can see it visually. Now see, here, let's, let's look in maybe this location. You're going to see like in here, this is the survey. You see like the gray, the gray is the survey. The, the, the cyan is the LIDAR. So that means in here, like for this area, I'm supposed to remove, you know, the sign, you know, of course you can come in here and say like, you know, break it and then delete and so on. Or you can use a donut. Imagine you can build a boundary that you can use to trim the data that's, you know, that's already survey. Yeah? So typically the survey is more so more or less like the data it's inside of the, it's inside of the, uh, the LIDAR, you know, so pretty much, you know, in here. So what I'm going to come in here, pretty much I can come in, I can do a polyline. I'm going to start doing a draw, like a draw, uh, inside boundary, that's what I know, like, you know, I'm going to be in, inside boundary. So I'm going to come here and see, so right here, I have like, this is my uh, edge of the roadway from the survey. This is the edge of the roadway from the LIDAR. So I'm going to come in here and start, you know, pretty much like I want to cut it there. I'm going to come in here, it's like I want to cut it there. So pretty much, you know, the data here in this side stays. The data here inside goes away. So pretty much I'm going to come in here and figure out like, you know, where, where pretty much what I'm to change the data. So you can see right here I have the data. And right there, this looks like that's the what's called the sidewalk. Of course, you can. I'm gonna go me here. Maybe I'm gonna turn off some of the layers because you know I hate you know like layers like this. I'm gonna turn the this one. I'm gonna try and the trees. I don't care about the trees in the survey. I'm gonna turn on the right away the tree numbers. You know, I turn off stuff. It like you know, there's not hardscape because all you care is about hardscape. You know, I don't care about the trees. You don't have you don't have trees in the in the lidar. You have only hardscape. So pretty much you know, here I'm gonna remove stuff that's you know. It's annoying to the eye. So pretty much here, like I don't care about manholes, I don't care about like you know property corners, I don't care about stuff. So just look, focus on focus on what actually matters. Yeah, pretty much hardscape. So if I continue from here, I'm gonna go here polyline. Here, so pretty much I'm gonna find stuff. So I'm gonna be from here. So I'm gonna go in here, pretty much figure out where the data you know is connected. So it looks like in here looks like this is the driveway. However, from the light that looks like this was the driveway. So it means you know like in here I have to adjust it. So I'm going to come in here and come like here, pretty much, you know, cross it there because the data, you see like this part of this is right here looks like it's, um, it's, um, it's a, uh, what is it? One? Maybe a si sidewalk or some stuff, you know? So in here, I'm going to come in here and chop it there and chop it here. So pretty much all the data that's in here going to be moved, deleted from the cat file. So I'm going to come in here, delete pretty much. I'm going to come in here, go around, find, you know, okay, so it meets there. 
This one looks like I'm, it's very gonna come in here goes like her. This one pretty much I'm gonna need, you know, up to let's say maybe uh, up to yeah, up to here maybe. We're gonna trim it there. It's like you know, you see like this sidewalk, you know, stops in here. So if you come in here, go around it, it's like okay, up to there, up to there, and up to there, up to there. It kind of gives you the extent of the survey, you know, stuff. So we're gonna come in here, comes here, and then you're gonna go down in here, chop the, you know, cut it there. So pretty much, you know, I'm defining all the inside boundary. And I'm, gonna, I'm not gonna go through the process of defining all this stuff here because I already did it outside. I'm gonna just copy the polygon from the other place, you know, I'm gonna show like, you know, what it looks like. So I'm gonna say select similar. Select similar, I'm gonna say here delete. Step keeps you from having to true up the the pink purple line with yes. your gray. Yes. Okay. So the gray is supposed to be the one that's left. Yeah. The other stuff is supposed to be gone because I already have the data for it. You know, I don't need it. You know. So so that's just like you know, this data on the outside is supposed to complement. It's not supposed to replace it. It's supposed to like okay, this place you know like my sidewalk from survey stops, my sidewalk from the uh, light dark continues because I'm supposed to stop. So I'm gonna go here. I'm gonna go to my um, where's my stuff in here? Maybe in here. And I'm going to copy, you know, the stuff that I worked, you know, for 10 minutes to define. So it's a copy zero zero this one. I'm going to come in here to my XSVSV site and I'm going to paste it zero zero in here. Come on. You see it? So pretty much, you know, of course, you know, if I take this stuff in here and take the properties of this stuff, make it maybe the global width of one. So you can see it'll be better. You're going to see that it goes pretty much everywhere. Like you see, like here, I have the survey, it stops in here, but this stuff, you know, continues mm -hmm. in the hardscape. And I went all the way around, you know, pretty much, you know, everywhere I have like survey and it trims and stuff. So pretty much, you see, like, you know, my my stuff in here uh, stops in here. Uh, this one continues in here. So this one was not, you know, taken by the, by, or maybe on this case, and on the side, you're going to see, like, you know, the stuff, stop, the survey stops in here, but the heavy stuff that continues from the planning from the light, I got. And because my sheets, you know, my sheets, they're going to go up to here. I'm supposed to show all the line work up to the edge of the sheet, you know. So I have to, besides the complement, you know, the B side is always complementing base file. So I'm going to come here, text and references. I'm going to go here, unload. And maybe I'm going to detach this one. And I'm going to do the same stuff that I did for the, I, mean, I didn't, I didn't finish the best stuff, you know. So on this one, before I go and trim the stuff on the inside, I'm going to come in here and trim this stuff on the outside because like, hey, it's like, you know, we forgot one step in here. So what the step here was supposed to trim the data on the outside, yeah? So in here, like, you know, you can do it here, like you can use a map trim command, yeah? We're going to go from the top down for boundary. You're going to see here, select boundary. You're going to see select boundary. You're going to see here, click select. And ask which boundary you want to select, you know, and here you're going to select, you know, the green line because the outside boundary. Then objects to trim, you're going to say like select automatically. So I don't want to manually select the objects. I want to, you know, for you to do it yourself. I'm going to trim all the outside and click OK. And you're going to say like here's AutoCAD map confirmation warning. Objects outside of the trim boundary, uh, not on frozen or locked layers will be trimmed or deleted. Proceed or not. It's like, yes, proceed and stuff. And it's like how nice it looks now. Yeah, pretty much, you know, all that extra data outside of my design, it's gone, yeah? Now, we have the same stuff in here. It's only that, you know, we have the inside boundary. So it means, you know, the data inside of this boundary is supposed to go away because it hits survey. So I'm going to go here, map trim. And again, again, from the top, select boundary. I'm going to say select in here. And here you're going to select, you know, the yellow line. This is the inside boundary. Of course, select automatically, you know, I don't care about, you know, all of them. Now here I'm going to say the trim method, it's supposed to be trim inside of the boundary. And click OK. And watch here, a donut hole. So pretty much here going to help hold because, you know, pretty much, you know, all the data that was surveyed, it com com it's completely there in here. So I'm going to go to external references. When come in here, it looks like, you know, I might have to attach it again because, you know, when you, when I do the trim inside, it deletes also, supposedly deletes also the any attached base files. Mm -hmm. So attach the WG again. I'm going to attach in here the, um, and remember the command to use, you know, for stuff, you know, Kim, or you can attach from the same location. Oh. X attach P, yeah. Mm -hmm. Pretty much X attach because, you know, I want to attach from the same location as my VA site. Mm -hmm. 
So say here D for drawing and it takes me to develop okay, without without for me had to browse all the way, you know, the stuff. So I'm coming here, selecting you know, the V site. And if you remember this one, it's a grid to ground. Yeah, so I have to put the green conversion put here 0 0.99989. So keep all that on your mind for this project. And rather, so pretty much on the outside. Now, of course, in here, I have to do a bit of cleanup. So I'm gonna come in here and do a uh, pretty much I'm, uh, look, I'm gonna freeze some of the data because I'm supposed to do a cleanup, you know. So the final step on this one is supposed to we are supposed to match the data. And I'll show you like what, what I'm looking at. So I'm coming here, freeze that one, freeze that one, pretty much freeze. I'm freezing stuff, you know, but there's not necessarily hard scale. So I'm gonna come in here to make it easier to see the you know, stuff. Okay, let's see, it makes sense now. So what happens in here is the following. It's like, you know, where I tune the data. So let's look in here. So here where I tune the data, this, this comes from the server. This is the SAWAC from the server, yeah? But this is the SAWAC from LiDAR. So what I'm supposed to do here, I'm supposed to go everywhere where I trim and match the data. So pretty much it's very consolidated. So here, like, you know, if I come in here, I'm gonna put, you know, this one on. Maybe put it as an endpoint. I'm gonna take you know this polyline and connect it there. So it's always a continuous line. Like you're not gonna see holes in it, you know. So I'm gonna come here, this stuff in here. So it looks like my my design stuff there. I'm gonna put it there. Now I'm gonna go here. The next stuff in here looks like you know this is the driveway. This is my design. So maybe I'm gonna put this stuff here and connect it. You know maybe that location. You know. So connect the data. You know because it's not supposed to hang up in the air. You know. And maybe another case, you know, right in here, see? This one is supposed to be connected there. So connect the data, so it's a, it's a, what's called, it's a, um, it's a single, pretty much, you know, transition from, you know, the LiDAR to the survey and back. Yeah. And this is the final step, pretty much, you know, just go and stuff, you know, and reconcile the data. You might have to reconcile the data also based on the aerial. So you have to look at the areas, like, you know, maybe like, you know, in the LiDAR area, because in the LiDAR area, Sometimes, you know, like the, for example, this edge might not be what shows up in the air. So you might have to come in here, maybe adjust it, you know, to make sure that it matches the air. But in the area where the, where the survey meets the LiDAR, make sure that, you know, for example, right here, I got, that's not the case in here. So you see like in here, like, you know, this is where is my edge of the roadway, and this is my edge of the roadway from LiDAR. So this one is supposed to meet at that location. So just come in here, like, you know, meet it the stuff, you know, now of course you can massage this stuff a little bit better. If you want other stuff in here, maybe sometimes I'm gonna put the, I don't know what's gonna do here, like a dim radius. Sometimes you can, I can other stuff, you know, maybe I can put here a polyline and then fix it. So I can put it, for example, I can do it like this. And here I'm gonna do a fillet. Let's say you can do a fillet in here. Radius of, I don't know, 50 feet. So I put the, the fillet in between this and I can other return. I have to, make, we have to figure out what is the radius better. By the day, he's like, you know, you have to, you got to try to make, you know, sure this stuff, you know, meets the tons. I'm going to maybe I'm going to do here, I'll remove the vertex. I mean, it's it's a bit of cleanup, you know, but once you have the whole stuff, you know, this thing will be like, a, you know, streamlined from one one data set to the other one. So do not leave any spaces left in between them. You can see, like, you know, lots of them, lots of places where you have to match, you know, like right here, match it, uh, match it. So go along the, go along the line and figure out where the stuff is supposed to be, you know. And then, you know, like go, go, you know, once you generate, you know, the aerial base file, you can attach it in the background and then adjust it all the, the line work in this one to match also the aerial for the app is not surveyed. So, because, you know, you are supposed to have that data and stuff. Of course, in here, you might have to figure out, like, you know, for example, if I come in here, I'm gonna turn on here, layer, turn all of them on. You're gonna see that this is, this is the property line from uh, LiDAR. And this is the property line from survey, yeah? So for a case in here, like, you know, if I look at here, like, you know, looks like the property line from the survey covers enough to the green line, yeah? So that means in here, I can come in here and delete this one. I don't need it, you know? So pretty much it's recon reconciled the data. Mm -hmm. you're, not you're not supposed to have two line, two different lines for the same uh, for the same data, yeah? So it's, it's a simple every time. But once the one is done, you're gonna have pretty much, at the end, you're gonna have the file load, unload, you can have a file that has clean on the outside and hole in the inside. Which one is stuff, pretty much is stuff, you know, but uh, of course, you know, if, if this one is a field, field to finish, you know, you know, file, 
then you don't have to worry about like you know the chimney inside because you're gonna use the data inside. But if you're serving for the data inside, you don't have to chimney out. You know you can have two you know two data for that one. So, uh, but that's all. Of course, you know, at the end you know just save the file, audit the file, and uh, you should be good to go. This is your planimetric base file. Of course, it's much more to to take care of when you have to do with production and so on. But uh, we're gonna get to that that point when we get to it. You know so.